In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Um, we'll make it. Um, we'll make it very, uh, very quick. Uh, I wanted to uh, to start actually with a little story because I have to say, like the kids, you guys are doing a fantastic job. So uh, I wouldn't be able to uh, to hold myself like that. So that's great. Good job, guys. Um, once upon a time, there was a king, and uh, that king was a good king, and he. Um, he took care of his people, he was doing a good job, and he has one minister who loved so much. And then one day he was sitting, that king, and he's eating an apple. And what happens? He's just cutting the apple and boom, he cuts his finger off. The blood comes out and he's like screaming and he's not happy and he's not sure what's happening and why did this happen? So obviously he calls his minister. And the minister comes, and he's like, what's going on? So obviously, like, he sees the blood everywhere. So he goes, gets a piece of cloth, and he wraps his finger and takes care of his king. And he's like, whatever happened, happens for good. Thank God. So obviously, the king got so angry, and he's like, what do you mean? Why would I thank God right now? Like, I just cut myself off, and I, I lost a piece of my finger. He's like, whatever happened, happens for good. Thank God. So he got so angry and he threw his minister in jail. He put him in jail. Then the guards come, take the minister, put him in jail. And then when he was going to jail, he says, whatever happened, happens for good. Thank God. So everybody starts looking at him and like laughing at him. Then what happened is the next morning, the king decided to go for, to hunt by himself on his horse. He goes in the forest and he lost his way. He couldn't get back home. He lost his way because he's by himself. He usually used to make sure his minister was him. So he, stay, he takes care of him. So he lost his way. And then after that, who found him? His enemies. So obviously, they take the king, tie him down to a tree. And great. We got that king, we're going to offer him as a sacrifice. So obviously the boss of that tribe comes and check him out because we got to offer a good sacrifice, a whole sacrifice. So he looks at his finger and he sees like the piece of cloth. So he takes it out and he sees that he's missing a piece of his finger. He's like, we can't offer him as a sacrifice. He's not whole. And everybody got like so alarmed. And they're like, we can't untie that king. Let him go. So he leaves and he goes back and he tries to find his way until he gets back to his kingdom. So obviously he's very happy. So he goes to prison and gets his minister back and he tells him, I have a story for you. This is what happens. So the minister looks at him and he laughs. And he's like, whatever happened, happened for good, thank God. He's like, I don't get what you're saying. Like, I was about to be offered as a sacrifice. He's like, yes. And guess what? What happened is you cut yourself off and you lost a piece of your finger that day. Thank God because because of this, you were not offered as a sacrifice. And because of you put me in prison that day, I was not with you hunting because if I was with you, you would be gone and they would offer me as a sacrifice. So whatever happened, happened for good. Thank God. So after this story, do we have that kind of faith? Let's ask ourselves this question. Do we have that kind of faith and trust in God's plan for me and for you? Do we know that for a fact? Do we apply Jeremiah 29, 11, really by the letter? I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper and not to harm. Plans for a future and for a hope. So the gospel of today is trying to teach us how to live in this world in peace. The number one thing is to actually remember that we are sojourner on this place and our God, the Pantocrator, the creator of heaven and earth, is the one that is our father. He is the one that have the plans for me. 
In the gospel of today, they taught us about ask. Ask, A-S-K, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be open to you. But the question was, if we look at Philippians 4, verse 6, which we all know, be anxious of nothing, but in everything but prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. That's the key. The key for us, the combination between us knowing the plans, not being anxious, not living in fear during this time, it's actually the ask that we need to ask for his name. Ask for whatever in my father's name and he will give you. So we have to ask for whatever we want in Christ's name and we got to seek it and then we got to knock so it will be open to us. But we have to be in full thanksgiving and in full trust that God has the plan for me, plan to prosper and not to harm, and be anxious for nothing. So today we are, the, the gospel is teaching us not to live your life with no peace. It's to actually to live your life with the real peace, not the external one, not the worldly one. It's that peace of John 14, 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you, not as the world gives do I give you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So if I am going to do like this minister and whatever happens to me because I am leaning on my own understanding and I'm trying to understand what's happening to me in my own limited mind, then I'm not going to trust. And that's why I am fearful. That's why I am living in a panic. That's why I'm stressful. That's why I don't have that peace. But I need to focus and remember one God has a plan for me, and that plan is always a plan to prosper, not to harm. Number two, he's asking me not to be anxious for nothing, but let my prayer be in supplication and in thanksgiving constantly. And last but not least, I will be able to live in the true peace, in the peace of the Lord, the peace of the Holy Spirit, I will be able to live this life as a sojourner with that type of peace and not the peace of the world. Not that peace when you do some yoga and you get some peace. That's not the peace we're talking about here. It's the real peace, the peace of the Holy Spirit. So may God grant us his peace, that true peace, the fruit of the Holy Spirit, so that we are able to live this life as a sojourner with full peace, knowing and trusting in God's plan. Glory be to God forever. Oh, no,